guests once again. Um, the next on our agenda will be the welcome address by Osan Nidio, a comrade who is the president and CEO of the Canadian Centre for Raw Material Display Incorporated. I have the privilege and red honor to introduce Leo. Leo is the president and founder of the Canadian Centre for Raw Material Display, as well as Lion Security Incorporated. Custom he hopes to have portions of its fiscal center dedicated to the display of industrial raw materials from other countries of the world. Thus, helping governments around the world, from provincial governments to territorial governments across Canada, as well as the states across Nigeria and locations across the world in general, showcasing the raw material strength of these various places, thereby increasing raw material visibility and economic prosperity for all. Leon is happily married and strongly supported by his wife, Ramota, and children, Yuri Orua, Orua Dumi, and Orua Ikaiyomi. Leon is a proud member of the Prince Albert and District Chamber of Commerce in Saskatchewan, Canada, and the Nigerian Society of Radiation Protection. Please, let's welcome Mr. Leon to the podium. We received some essays 
and we marked the exit. After marking, we invited the entrants to a quiz competition. First, to confirm if they were the one that wrote the essays or not, and secondly, to test their general knowledge or raw materials. At the end of the day, we gave a uh, cash prize to the first uh, person, and we also gave uh, to the second, to the third, and to the fourth. Every other students who were present were given free lunch on that day, and that was the 10th of June 2023. On the 10th of June 2023, we met with our own mayor at the Kiss Tower Park. But that was um, after we had conducted uh, a one week long event where we showcased the raw materials of Saskatchewan to grade 9 to 12. We observed that our students are being taught natural resources in school. But when they are able to see these raw materials, these uh, natural resources, it sticks to their brain more when they have a uh, physical touch or have physical contact with this raw material instead of theoretical uh, knowledge. That was why we did the end of the school year raw materials display between June 6 and June 9. On, on June 10th, we met our premier and we told him everything we have done within one week and he was pleased with what we have done. And then uh, that inspiration gave us the idea that at this point in time, in Organizing our first conference in which we will make Saskatchewan to be our principal focus. Saskatchewan is going to be our first location in the world. We have begun a journey today, a journey to advance education, a journey to advance economic prosperity, a journey to advance trade between participating countries in all of our events. And this journey is beginning with Saskatchewan. And we are focusing on two core raw materials of Saskatchewan. And we are looking at potash and uranium. Because uranium cannot be displayed because of its radioactivity nature, we are brought into this space today. Uh, potash, which we received from Nutrient, we showed this to our premier on the 10th of June, and then um, we are having it here today. It is the major focus of our conference for this first edition. And we have told our mayor that this conference shall be a biannual event, which shall bring people from all over the world we shall bring them here to Prince Albert two times in the year, November and April. We want to make the city to be more robust and to be well known across the world. We want the city to increase in economic prosperity, not just for us alone, but for everyone who is a citizen of and visitor to our city. And as a matter of fact, we have started this journey today, and we are glad that you are on board with us, and we cannot take your presence today for granted. So I think that is everything I would have to say at this point in time. I want to sincerely thank you all for your rapt attention and for listening to uh, this welcome address. Once again, thank you very much, everyone. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Leo Ekaibure, for that presidential speech. An introduction of the assembly to our guests, both in person and online. And thank you once again for joining us. Next on the agenda, we'd we'll like to get a special welcome address from His Worship Greg Dion, who is the mayor of the uh, great city of Prince Albert. Uh, he was here this morning, but uh, he has another schedule right at. 9.30, so unfortunately he had to leave for that particular event, which is part of the Remembrance Day commemoration. Uh, uh, so on his behalf, we will have um, Mr. Alex Jorio, who is the Director of Library Services, to present some remarks on behalf of uh, Mayor Gregio. Good morning, everyone. Um, as was noted, I'm not Greg Dion, and uh, I'm probably going to be very careful about speaking for him, but I can say with certainty that he is a great promoter of uh, Prince Albert and business and economic activity in Prince Albert, and he would be very glad to see this. And, uh, he uh, sends his regrets. He had to attend a Remembrance Day service, so it's not that he just 
have to rush off or something trivial. It, uh, it feels quite strongly about the mistakes, so yeah, we would have liked to have been here. And we'll be around at lunchtime if you have questions, so, so we can talk to you about that. Um, he's also going to speak as a uh, library director. And uh, on that, I'm uh, extra happy to see this group here today because it allows me to uh, just point out how the library, that is a not-for-profit charity in the community, can help stimulate business by providing spaces like this, by providing resources to learn about materials like potash and uranium for younger people who will be writing papers as a result of these proceedings today, and uh, just also assist in stimulating the economy, creating momentum for the community, which uh, things like this do, and make the place as well as a better one to live in for all of us. So uh, with that, I'm uh, very happy you're here. I'm grateful for the chance to address you, and I wish you a productive and uh, you know, useful day, and I hope some good partnerships are made. And uh, to see you again in the future. So with that, I'll uh, get back to the Master of Ceremonies and thank you very much. Thank you. thank you very much, Mr. Alex Jr., for the Google message. Also, on behalf of uh, the Mayor of our city, Mayor Greg Dion, his worship. We also have a couple of more booking messages that will come your way. So next we will be inviting the CEO of Prince Albert and District Chamber of Commerce. In no other person but his party peers. Please let me by hand. District Chamber of Commerce, it is my esteemed pleasure to extend a warm welcome to each of you in the inaugural International Conference and Exhibition of Raw Materials. Today marks an extraordinary moment as you convene to explore the vast frontiers and opportunities in the realm of raw materials, where innovation meets the fundamental building blocks of industry and progress. The pursuit of sustainable development, technological advancement, and global economic growth hinges significantly on the exploration and utilization of raw materials. This conference serves as an invaluable platform to delve into the intricate facets of this pivotal sector. We are deeply honored and humbled as a community to host distinguished experts, researchers, entrepreneurs, and visionaries from across the globe converging under one roof online as a virtually, and to exchange groundbreaking ideas, share experience, and forge collaborations that will shape the future landscape of raw materials industry. Throughout the course of this conference, you will engage in thought-provoking discussions, gain insights from esteemed speakers, witness pioneering technologies, and cultivating relationships that will propel innovation and sustainable practices within the raw material sector. In a world where challenges and opportunities intersect, it is through collective knowledge, collaboration, and the dissemination of best practices that we pave the way for progress. Our hope is that this event becomes a melting pot of ideas, opportunities, fostering dialogue that transcends borders and cultivates a shared vision for a sustainable and prosperous future. As you embark on this significant journey, I encourage you all to seize this opportunity to network, learn, and inspire each other. Your contributions and dedication will undoubtedly play a pivotal role in shaping the narrative of raw materials for generations to come. Let us leverage this occasion to create a roadmap that not only enhances our economic prospects, but also ensures that our community flourishes in harmony with the environment and its people. Once again, a heartfelt welcome to the International Conference and Exhibition for Raw Materials. May this gathering and exhibition may this gathering be a catalyst for innovation, cooperation, and progress. Thank you for your presence and enthusiastic participa participation. Here's to a fruitful and inspiring conference ahead. On behalf of Prince Albert and District Chamber of Commerce, welcome everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Penny, for that good new message to our guests today. We'll be moving along our agenda. We also have the privilege to have a keynote 
Speaker today join us representing the government of Saskatchewan. I'd like to welcome Mr. Uh, Daryl Harrison. Mr. Daryl Harrison is currently the MLA for Cannington and the provincial secretary for the Saskatchewan government Ministry of Energy and Resources. Mr. Harrison was elected as an MLA for Cannington in the year 2020 provincial elections. He worked in the oil industry for over 30 years in various roles, including as an accountant manager with Baker Hughes General Electric. Mr. Harrison has also served as a councillor for the local rural municipality and as the director of Zone 1 of the Saskatchewan Stock Growers Association. He is also a member of the Lions Club, a volunteer firefighter, and a cattle rancher. Additionally, he was also the school division trustee for the Soros, Moose, Mountain, and Southeast School Division. Please join me to welcome Mr. Harrison to the podium. Sustainable and reliable potash and uranium supplies, 
plus helium and other essential resources, the pressure is increasing on regions like Saskatchewan to expand production. It is imperative to get these communities to market and make them available for manufacturing into fertilizer, clean energy, and other, excuse me, and other necessities of modern life. Now we have some idea of what's driving the mineral shortage and what's likely to drive it in, in excuse me, drive it into the future. These are geopolitical uncertainty leading to a demand for mineral resources that are reliable, sorry, mineral sources that are reliable and politically secure, growing global production and incomes, which means more people waiting, wanting, waiting and wanting for nutritious food and what we'll get to shortly, the increase in global electrification and nuclear power generation to reduce emissions and diversify energy supply. These seem like very big challenges. Saskatchewan has been there to meet most of these challenges and we will continue to be there into the future. As more and more regions are looking to secure sources for critical minerals from secure, politically stable regions, they are looking right here directly into our province. Saskatchewan is the best place in Canada to develop natural resources, including the minerals the world needs. We are the second largest producer of uranium across the globe. We mark this important milestone at the end of 2022. Saskatchewan is the only uranium producer in Canada, and the uranium deposits found here have the world's highest grades. Last year, the yellow cake produced in Saskatchewan accounted for 15% of all world uranium production. This is due to the strong performance of our Saskatchewan producers, Cameco, Orano, and Tepco. Plus, the Athabasca Basin hosts several active firms with world-class projects at various stages of development. These include NextGen Energy, Denison Mines, and Vision Uranium. Last year, Cameco reopened the MacArthur River Mine and Key Lake Mill. After placing these facilities in care and maintenance in 2018, due to the prolonged market weakness, this further helped boost the scalping uranium production in the latter months of 2022. It also meant that several hundred experienced miners could return to work and support their families. Roughly half of these employees are Indigenous. The restarts also were significant for the service and secondary firms that rely on the uranium sector for procurement work. When all was said and done, at the end of last year, Saskatchewan uranium sales were nearly $1 billion. That is an accomplishment worth celebrating. Let's now turn to potash. Sometimes referred to as pink gold, this is an essential commodity that farmers need to maintain their livelihoods. As I'm sure you're all aware, it is a key fertilizer for many plants throughout the world. We expect demand for potash to increase as global populations continue to grow. Farmers around the world need more potash to meet the rising demand for food. Saskatchewan is and will continue to remain the number one global producer of potash. Conservative estimates predict the province can supply global potash demand for the next 200 years, if not longer. That's stability we can bank on. And there's no doubt our potash industry is valuable. Last year, our province again set a record for potash sales, reaching nearly $18 billion. That's a 137% increase on the value of sales from 2021. We can point to all our industry partners operating here for making last year's record a reality, Nutrient, Mosaic, and K plus S. And not to forget about BHP. To date, the Australian mining firm has committed $18.8 billion worth of investment for its Janssen mine just east of Saskatoon. During the pandemic, BHP made the largest single investment announcement in the province's history. This was in the summer of 2021, when BHP committed an additional $7.5 billion to build this Janssen mine just east of Saskatoon. 
And just last month, the company added another $6.4 billion worth of investment for stage two of the mine. DHP is expecting to start production from Janssen in 2026. Last year, mineral producers in Saskatchewan collectively helped generate $19.4 billion in sales. For context, this was the highest value of any Canadian province or territory in the year. Again, these are notable accomplishments and they show that Saskatchewan is the best place in Canada to develop natural resources. Returning to this conference's theme, it's now time to look at the new developments and solutions. These are the basics of how Saskatchewan is going to do it and is parting and addressing these mineral shortages and continuing as a Canadian leader in the development of our natural resources. Our province is ready with well-researched solutions and new developments that we believe will keep us positioned as the best place in Canada to develop natural resources. Earlier this year, the government of Saskatchewan launched Securing the Future, Saskatchewan Critical Mineral Strategy. The strategy is our roadmap for driving growth and development of these essential commodities. In addition to supporting the objective set out in the Saskatchewan Growth Plan, the strategy outlines four goals for the sector. Number one is to increase Saskatchewan's annual share of Canadian mineral exploration spending by 15% by the year 2030. As Saskatchewan accounted for 17, or sorry, excuse me, 7.4% of the national total in 2021, we see that an increase of 8.5% in 2022. This will be a significant increase. We know that the exploration is both expensive and risky. While risk and reward are hallmarks of the industry, our government is making the investments to mitigate those challenges. The government of Saskatchewan is making a $4.4 million investment for improved geoscience data and management technology. This will allow established industry partners and new exploration firms to have easier access to the cutting edge resources offered by the Saskatchewan Geological Survey. It will also further streamline geoscience data submissions industries. It will also streamline geoscience data submissions industry makes to the government. The funding will help to improve access to this valuable information used by explorers and stakeholders. It will give them more confidence in getting the most up-to-date, high-quality data, and this will lead to informed low-risk investment decisions in Saskatchewan. It will also work to expand the incentive programs to encourage exploration in the province. Our government tripled the Saskatchewan Mineral Exploration Tax Credit from 10 to 30 percent. The goal here, as I noted, is to drive investment in mineral exploration. By purchasing eligible flow-through shares issued by approved mineral exploration firms, Saskatchewan residents will get a direct stake in the future prosperity of the province. The boost to 30 percent now makes this tax credit the highest program of its kind in Canada, equal to Manitoba. We also expanded the targeted mineral exploration incentive. The annual budget for this incentive now sits at $4 million, up from $750,000, and now applies to exploration drilling for all hard rock minerals across the entire province. We also increased the funding limit to support emerging commodities. Together, these options are increasing the attractiveness for, for exploration firms to invest more in natural resources here in the province. A second goal we've set in the strategy is to grow the production of potash, uranium, and helium. Our province is blessed with world-leading technology for these minerals and through working with industry here, we have established a competitive business environment which has room to grow. There is an opportunity for our province to expand our share of world demand for these resources. That demand is driven by increased global consumption and the ongoing need for a reliable and sustainably produced supply. 
As I've said before, our province is ready to step up to take, <clears throat> take recent developments in our uranium sector, for example. Last year, it contributed over $576 million to our provincial GDP. It also employs more than 2,300 people in Saskatchewan, and almost half of its mine site employees are northern residents. The sector also procured more than $600 million of goods and services in 2022, with 35% of those from Saskatchewan Indigenous businesses. With the return of MacArthur River and Key Lake to operations for the full year in 2023, production volumes are expected to increase by more than 50% to over 13 million kilograms of yellow cane. When thinking about new developments and solutions, it's important to highlight a new Denison project. I'm referring to Wheeler River. Denison is planning to develop Wheeler River as Canada's first in situ uranium mine. That means the uranium would be dissolved and pumped to the surface using a solution brine. If approved and developed, Wheeler River would have no conventional tailings, large waste rock piles, open pits, or underground workings. This would result in a reduced footprint for the operations, which would still contribute to our province's overall production in a big way. Next Gen Energy is also looking to build a new uranium mine with its Rook One project. The company is developing one of the largest uranium deposits in the world at Rook One located in the southwestern Athabasca Basin. The project has cleared several important regulatory hurdles over the last year. Just in September, Group 1 went into the final stages of the Provincial Environmental Assessment Review. It's worth noting that NextGen plans to make Group 1 the largest, low-cost producing underground uranium mine in the entire world. Once these projects begin operation, the province's uranium production could double. This would be a huge win for Saskatchewan, especially as, as the world increasingly looks to nuclear generated power to cut emissions. It's clear that uranium demand is going to increase. The, Saskatchewan, the governments of Saskatchewan, Ontario, Alberta and New Hampshire have committed to work together on advancing small nuclear gas. The goal is to power the grid to the clean energy option to address climate change and regional energy demand. And that demand is set to increase as many more regions globally are pursuing small modular reactions and increase nuclear development. The government of Saskatchewan is committed to meeting that demand for nuclear fuel and continuing to reduce emissions. For example, take the nearly 14 million kilograms of uranium we expect to produce this year. The nuclear power generated from that could mean cutting carbon dioxide emissions by 375 million tons. That's the same amount of carbon emitted by burning roughly 195 million tons of coal. As our production numbers grow, it will mean further reductions in carbon dioxide emissions. We are seeing solutions developing in the potash sector too. Industry partners are doing their part to meet growing demand from markets around the world. K plus S Potash Canada is currently operating a solution mine near Bethune, which opened in 2017. It is the first new potash mine to open in Saskatchewan since the 1970s. Similar to in situ uranium mining, solution potash mining involves pumping a solution brine underground. The potash is dissolved into the brine, which is pumped back to the surface. From there, the potash is recovered from the solution. In May last year, K plus S announced plans to double current production at the Bethune mine over the next couple of decades. If those plans go ahead, it will mean significant investments, increased employment, and more production to meet the global demand. Mosaic and Nutrient have also responded to the growing demand and concerns over global food security. Having recently completed its multi-million dollar Esther Hazy K3 expansion, Mosaic has also increased capacity and restarted the Collins A mine. The company has also set an ambitious target to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions company-wise by 2040. 
A nutrient beginning last year dedicated considerable capital to ramping up production capabilities. It also has the ability to increase output further as potash demand increases in the years ahead. As the world's largest provider of crop inputs and services, Nutrient is playing an ever-increasing role in safely and sustainably growing the food globally that will be needed for the almost 10 billion people predicted by 2050. Meanwhile, BHP is championing sustainability as it builds build out the Jansen site. The company has contracted with the Swedish firm Sandvik to use 11 large electric power loaders at Jansen. This will mean large reductions on the industrial scale of diesel consumption. BHP feels the electric mining equipment is essential to meeting their goals to reduce emissions, improve productivity, and most importantly, protect the health of their employees. Again, this is another solid commitment to sustainability while increasing production. And as Saskatchewan potash is already produced with approximately 50% fewer greenhouse gas emissions than global competitors, this will build on the sector's world-leading emissions performance. These sound like great solutions to me. The third goal of critical mineral strategy is to double the number of minerals produced here to six by 2030. To get there, we're supporting expansion into other minerals, including copper, zinc, and lithium. These minerals are abundant in Saskatchewan, and used in everyday items. That includes semiconductors, batteries, smartphones, electric vehicles, wind turbines, and a variety of other high-tech devices. Foran Mining Corporation is making headway on its Macklevin Bay copper mine. The deposit near Flintlawn also includes zinc, which is another key critical mineral. Foran is aiming to make the mine carbon neutral it plans for the site to produce 65 million tons of copper equivalent per year. This company recently had its provincial environmental impact assessment approved, an important step on the path to construction. Oran also signed a collaboration agreement with the Peter Ballantyne Cree Nation this year, committing to sustainable growth and future prosperity for several First Nation communities. As for lithium, our government is taking steps to ensure explorers have the tools they need to succeed. Last year, the government expanded two incentive programs to include lithium projects. Originally, the Oil and Gas Processing Investment Incentive and the Saskatchewan Petroleum Innovation Incentive only covered oil, natural gas, and heating projects. Now they will cover lithium projects. The Oil and Gas Processing Investment Incentive offers a 15% transferable royalty credit for qualified greenfield or brownfield lithium processing facilities. The Saskatchewan Petroleum Innovation Incentive provides a similar 25% transferable credit for innovation, commercialization of lithium projects. So far, Arizona Lithium Grounded Lithium and Hub City Lithium are actively drilling for this metal in Saskatchewan. As its core component in batteries for electric vehicles, demand is set to sustainably increase in the years ahead. Our government's final goal for the strategy is to establish Saskatchewan as a rare earth element hub. We are pleased the Saskatchewan Research Council is progressing on its rare earth processing facility in Saskatoon. The facility is set to be operational in 2024. It is establishing the foundation for a world-class rare earth element supply chain right here in Saskatchewan. That's why we have committed $71 million to help fund the SRC site. The SRC houses some of the world's leading experts in rare earth processing and separation technology. We expect the SRC will play a leading role in establishing Saskatchewan as a rare earth hub. That means it will continue to capture value as a secure catalyst for commercial scale, private sector development well into the future. The critical mineral strategies, four goals are a roadmap for achieving 
for new developments and solutions needed to meet the ever-increasing demand for minerals and raw materials. It will also ensure that Saskatchewan remains the top region in Canada to develop, to develop these important resources. I'll leave you with one final statistic. Last year, energy and mining together made up of, made up over a quarter of Saskatchewan's gross domestic, gross domestic product, or GDP. The sector is a key economic driver for Saskatchewan. Mining generated $19.5 billion in sales in 2022, the highest level ever recorded in the province. We are committed to ensuring Saskatchewan's natural resources sector continues to thrive, especially as they need for secure, stable and sustainable supply chains increase. Thank you all for being here and thank you for your work in Saskatchewan's natural resource sector. It leads to jobs, wealth and opportunity for the people of the province. I look forward to the opportunity to gather, network and learn from each other. Thank you very much. and gentlemen, I want to thank you for the invitation to attend your conference. Unfortunately, I must express my sincere apologies for not being able to attend this very important conference today due to my work commitments at the legislature. I truly regret not being with you in person as I understand the value of the discussions and interactions that take place at events like this, especially when we are facing a global shortage of raw materials. This issue is a matter of paramount importance for our economies, industries, and indeed the very fabric of our society. In these times of global shortage of raw materials, I am proud to share with you the remarkable efforts and achievements of our government. We have not shied away from the challenges presented by the scarcity, but have embraced them with determination and innovation. Our province, I believe, stands as a shining example of responsible resource management and sustainability. We have implemented robust policies and initiatives to secure a resilient supply chain and reduce our reliance on scarce resources. Through investments in research and development, we have explored alternative materials and technologies, fostering a culture of innovation that promises to reduce the impact of resource shortages. I'd like to thank you all, and I trust that your discussions here today will yield valuable insights and strategies that will help us build a more resilient and sustainable future for our province and the global community. Thank you, and have a great conference. Thank you.
So thank you, Reverend Jiraji, for the good message to the vice president of this media conference. So next, we will have the opportunity to um, again uh, hear from the Honorable Randy Kovac, who is a member of parliament. He is also unavoidably absent, but if you scan the QR code on the agenda, you will uh, get to the main brochure for the event, and you will see the message he has sent to the uh, conference attendees. So please uh, take your time and browse through, so you can save some time there to move along to other events. So we also appreciate the uh, good message he has provided in writing to members of the, uh, to the participants of this conference today. So thank you so much, Honorable Randy Robert. Mr. Liu will take us through a display and presentation and exhibition of potash and uranium raw material in the next agenda. And then we will proceed to the water tanks and crop. So that will be the next two and next ten agenda before we uh, adjourn the lunch. Thank you. At this point in time, I would like to we are the core of the conference. So this presentation is the most important thing at this point in time right now, and that is why we are gathered here today. We are gathered because we want to show to the whole world what we have in Saskatchewan. We want to present to the entire world why Saskatchewan is thick and why Saskatchewan is uh, one of the most important provinces in Canada. Uh, first and foremost, we want to look at um, the question uh, what are raw materials? Uh, if you look up there over the internet and in many uh, uh, books that you have everywhere in the world, you will discover that there is no um, standard definition for raw materials. And uh, we have a standard definition to be to the world. When we say raw material, we have it coined from two words raw and material. The word raw uh, simply means in its natural form. It means in its natural form. And by that we mean that it has not been processed. And the other one is material. By material we mean uh, resource. By material we also mean substance. When we join the two words together, we have natural resource. So we simply will say that raw materials are natural resources. You will agree with me that raw materials are natural resources. In the simplest way for us to understand what it is. And um, there are three types of raw materials. We have mineral-based raw materials, and we have agricultural raw materials, and we have the third one, uh, the fossil forest. So I'll give you this definition by hat, and please come have the next slide. These are the types of raw materials that we have. If you put on Google and try to find out the types of raw materials, different people give you different kinds of answers. Not one is standard. We are presenting here the standard types of raw materials according to us. And the first one is mineral-based raw materials, and the second one is agricultural raw material, and the third one is uh, fossil fuels. These are the raw materials you can have in the whole wide world. There is no in-between. These are the raw materials. So we're going to take them one after the other at this time. Now when we look at mineral raw materials, we are talking about any substance that is naturally occurring, any substance that is homogeneous, any substance that has a definite chemical composition, any substance that is formed inorganically, that is the mineral raw materials. Let's go next slide. A good example is uranium potash, and there are several other kinds. Saskatchewan has two of the most desirable minerals in the world, potash and uranium. The world's largest high-grade uranium deposits are located in northern Saskatchewan the Makato River Uranium Mine. Now, I want you to know that if we say that we are talking about the largest uh, exporter of, raw matter, of uranium in the world, we will be talking about Kazakhstan, not Saskatchewan. But if we're talking in terms of high-grade uranium, you find it here in Saskatchewan. The high-grade uranium in the world is found here in Saskatchewan, and we are excited to say that over and again. Use in nuclear reactors uh, locally. Saskatchewan uranium is recorded for powering approximately one in 20 homes in the United States of America. 
There is also significant unrealized potential for volcanogenic and sediment posted base metal deposits in supercrustal rocks of the Precambrian sheet of the Northern Sustato. Now, this just shows the distribution of uranium exports all over the world as of 2022. We don't have the data for 2023 at this point in time. There are areas with high growth potential that remains unexplored in our province. Other mineral based resources produced in Saskatchewan are salt and kaolin, sodium and potassium sulfates, potentials of copper, zinc, nickel, cobalt, rare earth and platinum group elements. Saskatchewan has the largest potash industry in the whole wide world, accounting for about one third of global animal production. As regards the agricultural raw materials, we look at the world agriculture. We talk about substances that can be uh, planted, that can be grown, and we talk about um, uh, things that can be reared, like animals. So when it comes to plants and animals, we are referring to agricultural raw materials. So anything that comes from that area, there are examples of what uh, agricultural raw material is plant or animal together with describe as uh, such as agro raw materials. Saskatchewan is the world's largest exporter of lentils, peas, durum wheat, mustard seed, canola, flax seed, and oats. Saskatchewan is the second largest cattle. Now, the third classification that we are given, you can find it anywhere else. We have done our research extensively, and this is what we're going to have as standard all over the world. The third type of raw material that we have is fossil fuel. Fossil fuels are substances or resource that you get from the decomposing plants or animals. When animals and plants are dead over several years, uh, they give us fossil fuel. A good example is coal, crude oil, and natural gas. Scotland is the second largest oil producer in Canada, and the sixth largest onshore producer in Canada and the United States. Saskatchewan is the third largest natural gas producer in the whole of Canada. Saskatchewan has an estimated oil reserve of almost 1.2 billion barrels. Saskatchewan's expertise in clean coal technologies is an example of how the province is committed to bringing up its conventional energy resource. Now, the potash we are showing in this conference, which is the focus of our first edition, we received it from Nutren. Nutren is one of the biggest mining companies in the world not just in Canada, but in the entire world. They gave our centre, at no cost, the raw material that will be shown to schools and that will be shown to individuals and that we are presenting in this conference today. Like I said before, each of our conference will focus on a certain location and one or two of its raw materials. Uh, we are going to uh, be having uh, projecting from Prince Herbert all of the raw materials of those locations. Our second edition is coming up in April of next year. We have the four people who are registered online. They prepared to attend this conference. Some were given a uh, partial fee waiver, but some were given complete fee waiver because of their interest uh, in our activity. And we are glad that that event is going to be focused on Alberta. And we are focusing on lithium and limestone for our second edition of our conference. It will take place in this hall in our activity. And we are glad that that event is going to focus on our data and we are focusing on lithium and limestone for our second edition of our conference. It will take place in this hall. Now the new trend uh, they gave us the potash that we are presenting today. From the bottom of the mine to the top of the silo, new trend is continuously committed to feeding the future safely and with integrity each day leading the agricultural industry in innovation and making a bold new thinking because the future needs food. And um, we are glad today that we have right to my left the potash that we are presenting at this point in time uh, at this event. This is the core of this conference. And the core of our next conference is lithium and limestone. And we shall be mirroring of projecting Alberta as a province from Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. 
And by November next year, we shall be memory of Project in Manitoba. We shall take one or two of its raw materials and present to the whole world as it were. We are trying to make visible raw materials for investors, for researchers, and also for the entire world. We believe a time will come in some of our promises, some raw materials that we have to make that makes our promises tick. Should we not find one or two again? And researchers want to make, uh, they want to look for where do we find these samples of this raw material that used to be here before. In our center, we want to have archives of such samples for researchers to be able to compare with others that they might discover from time to time, uh, wherever the research may take them to. Now we have here a uh, potash from six different mines in Saskatchewan. And this potash, this is from Lanigan. It's a location here, and this is Cory. Now these samples, like I mentioned, were given to us at no cost. And then these are sachets in sachets. Uh, we took these to the schools for kids to touch. Some were wondering what kind of rock we brought to them. And we told them these are just not rocks, they are samples of potash. And um, in the country where I migrated from, Nigeria, about five years ago, before I became a Canadian this year, uh, we call potash a cow, we use it to make, to cook food. But we can't use this to cook food. The chemical composition of that potash is different from this one. And the intent of this conference is to bring scholars to tell us why we have differences in all these uh, uh, samples of potash. In the coming days, this afternoon, we are going to be having two uh, doctors, academic doctors, who will be leading us in conversation uh, with regards to some of these thoughts that we are trying to um, uh, reflect on. So these are samples of potash that we have uh, received from Nutrain. Uh, before you go, if you want to take a look at it, you are free to come touch it. Uh, you can touch it, shake it, look at it, and see uh, for yourself, these are just good samples of potash from nutrient from our own province, and we are excited to present this to the whole world. That these samples of potash, you cannot find it anywhere in Canada except in Saskatchewan. No province of Canada mine potash except Saskatchewan, and Saskatchewan is continuously contributing to the economic development of Canada, and essentially uh, taking a very strong uh, place in the economy of the entire world. And this is what we have here today. Before you go, we advise that you can come along and just take, touch it, shake it, look at it. Uh, it will hurt. So once again, I want to thank for your rapt attention. Thank you so very much for listening to me. Thank you. You have any questions? I'm going to answer all the questions. Before then, let me read my conclusion. Kasame is committed to educating the general public for raw materials. Focused on potash and uranium for this conference edition. But we have only potash to display, which was given to us as not one of 74 by Nutrient, the larger producer of potash, the top producer of nitrogen in the world. We have to the samples of it. We have to give the samples for educational purposes and also for investors of means. What I mean by that is investors who want to go into, for instance, in this lecture, we are provoking thoughts uh, in the heart of participants to think of how they can take our uh, fertilizer to their part of the world where they are joining us from. And um, some do not know that we produce fertilizer at the rate that we are producing it. So we kind of want to, want to think about the option. If you look at the program of events that we have to download on the phone, uh, that program of events we talk about the greatest investment of the future. Some will decide at the end of this conference to say, hey, this is a deal. I want to go to exportation of, uh, of, of fertilizers. We need fertilizer back home in our country. And we'd like to connect them with the right uh, agency of government uh, that will help them to uh, facilitate that process and make it easier for them all. So if we have questions, I want to check to see if we have questions from online. Do we have questions? Okay, that case we don't have questions at this point in time. So the signature ladies and gentlemen. At this point in time, I would want to end this speech uh, with a vote of thanks uh, and a wrap up. Uh, I've done the presentation, but I just want to thank you all again for coming to our first edition. But I wanted to go on with this talk that Prince Albert will be hosting by annually 
the assembly in the Niger conference every November and every April. We promise we're going to make it better than this first edition. And again, we are going to be looking at Alberta, and we are, we are projecting lithium and limestone. We are bringing people in person. People couldn't come in person for this event. We have over 50 directors for this event also. But because the time that we planned this event was around July, immigration told us to notify them six months before the event. We are happy that we have the support of immigration at this point in time. So essentially, uh, by next year, by next year, April 25, we shall have people in this hall from all over the world that will be attending our conference. Uh, we could not get our enough Canadians to attend because uh, Canadian Center for Raw Materials we don't have enough staff at this point in time. But by next edition, we'll have enough staff, enough people to do a lot of things, and it will be better. Please, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for coming, and um, we have free lunch for everyone, and um, uh, we hope to have you in our next edition. Please come home and invite you. First edition. Thank you once again. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Neil and the President for the excellent presentation for the enlightenment of the raw materials and uh, they're all here for display. You know, they say when you give a lecture and there are no questions, it's either of two things. It's either that the lecture was so good that there was absolutely no need to ask a question, or that the students just want to please the lecturer by not asking questions. So I want to think that it's the first one, that the lecture was so good that he left absolutely no room for questions. Please let's give him a hand. Thank you very much. Um, we will be, for those attending in person, we'll have the opportunity to take a group photo, and then we break for lunch, and I think the photo will be at the lobby. So the man will direct us where that's going to be. And then please don't forget to have a feel of the raw material just play here. I believe that's one of the objective of the conference today. And I really want to take a moment to thank all of you who are here in person as well as those joining virtually. Um, when babies are born, when babies are born, they take the very baby steps to learn how to walk. And what happens when they're undergoing that process of learning how to walk? They fall and they get up again. They take another step until they must step. Those are the teaching problems, those are the baby steps that are anticipated or something do for that. So we thank you all for understanding. Thank you all for accommodating us for the pages at the beginning. And thank you for our most distinguished uh, 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 special guest today who brought a very known uh, keynote uh, speech on behalf of the government of Saskatchewan, Mr. Harrison. We really thank you for your presence. And um, uh, on behalf of uh, uh, Leo Picabre, I'd like to uh, thank all of you once again for your presence this morning. So we'll uh, adjourn now, and then we'll come in again after lunch for the two remaining lectures of the day. Thank you.